Welcome back to Collaboration Conversations. I am your co-host, Regina Partain Bergman. As many of you know who've watched the show before, my, my co-host, Pearl Cox, is unable to be with us right now. And so I am enjoying the pleasure of having guest co-hosts while Pearl is out. And honestly, I want to continue this practice when she comes back because it's just been so much fun. And I've met so many amazing people during this process. So let me introduce you to my guest co-host this morning. My guest co-host is Kim Walker, and Kim is a business breakthrough strategist, and I'm going to let her tell you the rest of what she does, because she's so much more than that as well. Kim, welcome to the show today, and would you share with us a little bit about your journey, uh, who you serve, and why? Thank you so much. It's a great uh, chance to be here, and it's a busy time of the year, so I'm really excited to have this group of people with us today. And um, I am a breakthrough coach, strategist, they say, but it started as a itinerant bassoonist, um, the only first woman to ever perform in the London Symphony, when I was told you will never play in the London Symphony, and then I won that position. So I've, I've um, majored in trying to do impossible things all my life. And so I went into higher education where I was a senior dean and administrator for a decade or so. And then I started coaching CEO, CEOs, and um, I've been coaching them in leadership and mindset. And then I said, well, let's put this all together. And I ran a mastermind for five years in Sydney, all about how to help people accelerate their profits and how to actually help them excel. Because I find they come for the money, but they, it's really a whole different story underneath. And um, so... That's who I serve, our, our entrepreneur business leaders, usually 200K and higher, who really want to hit that 7K, even 8K mark. And they have to go through that whole business of expanding and hiring people, getting the right talent. And um, it's just like running a school of music. So that part mm -hmm. translates perfectly. So that's some of how I've ended up in this arena and how I was lucky enough to gather four amazing individuals here who have totally different styles of collaboration through their business. And yet they bring that same ethic of um, Excel, promoting, benefiting the world while they're doing it and um, helping everybody else think differently and go to the next level of kind of consciousness. So I think I've probably said too much there, but. Oh, I love it. I love it. This opens the doorway for people to enjoy some vivid discussion in, in the next 40 minutes or so. All right. Yes. Fantastic. That's wonderful, Kim. And I am grateful to learn more about your journey. I learned a few things in there that I didn't know. So happy to hear that. Would you introduce our guest panelists today, please? I will do a brief introduction because there, there's so much more than I could say about any of them. And uh, I could probably spend the whole time introducing their accolades here. So I will go in alphabetical order by their first names, if that's a good system here. And um, Anka is... Um, almost in disguise as a corporate consultant of enormous success because she's actually brings poetry and a sensitivity um, healing um, talents to the, the fore. So I'm going to let her ex introduce herself a bit more in just a minute. Um, Jennifer is uh, also um, almost like an antenna coming into this world uh, and she is fascinated and helping families handle their behavioral issues in the family through deep research, psychology, and again, a touch of the otherworldly comes into her thought processes in the most amazing combination. And then um, Will is an academic like me, and yet he has so much more, and he's, he's a leadership uh, mentor. And he goes into companies and consulting a team. And so again, we all have this corporate side we wear but there's this real side. So I'll let them introduce the, the two sides of their stories. Um, and Will has an amazing story. He's a TED speaker and a phenomenal international speaker. Um, and so he's got a whole story about life crashing and life rebuilding mm -hmm. that everybody can actually really relate to, whether we admit to it or not. And then Winston 
he's a genius. He, he comes and he speaks technology language, but he does it in a human way. Even I can understand, which is amazing. Um, and so while he's building these multi-million dollar companies and uh, speaking several languages and traveling the world, I mean, we're amazing to catch him today. He's probably just off a plane. Um, he's also building uh, a school for, um, you know, children that he can talk to you about. So again, everybody is so much more than any CV and brings together collaborations behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. And as a bassoonist, I could lead the orchestra from the bottom line of the orchestra by hitting the rhythm. I could also lead the orchestra as soloist or as conductor. So there are so many styles of leadership. And I think this group is a perfect demonstration of even more variety than that. So that's why we're here today. And uh, I'm going to open the floor for each of you to introduce yourself, if I might, and share a little bit who you serve and why you serve them, if you don't mind. And let's hear your version of your your introductions. Um, Anka, would you be happy to begin? Yeah, I would be happy to. Um, sorry for the scratchy voice. I'm just getting myself over some bug I caught up on the way from Dubai back uh, a week or so ago. Um, I'm a senior executive coach and I'm a strategy consultant, transformation consultant. Um, who I work with are senior executive leaders. Um, and what I help them with is really getting that extra bit of clarity and, and really stand in their power. Um, and so those are at a very high level uh, what I do. I work with individuals, teams and corporations, companies, of course, which is always now what does there look like? Like, what does there really look like? What does that feel like? Where are you going? And where are you today? Let's get honest about that. It's okay. The upper doesn't have any clothes on, so it's okay. And how do we get these steps from, 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 from here to there? And how can we have steps that actually, just like when you're riding your bike off road and you get that traction, how do you gain traction on that path to get from here to there? Um, there's probably a ton more to say. There's probably at some point a poem to share. Um, as well as the movie that we're working on. So, um, but I, I'm going to stop and, and uh, hand the baton. You do have to say something about that movie today before we get off. Okay. And yes. Jennifer. Hi. Um, there's so many Jennifers in my generation that I switched to J Love. So, <laughs> so that's what's showing on the screen. And I work with uh, Mercury Coach. It's a partnership with my husband and I. And if you want to talk about collaboration, it's very rich to talk about building a company with your partner. Um, and my history is that I've worked in collaborative environments quite a bit. I was in tech previously and built a consultancy and a collaborative team and transitioned in when I transitioned into parenthood all of a sudden things began to get very, very difficult in a way they hadn't been <laughs> in the corporate world. And uh, as I like to do, I ended up making my life my profession. And in addressing the different challenges that, uh, that I was dealing with in parenthood, I discovered a realm of psychology that I'd always been pursuing on the side for fun and realized that it was really the key to unlocking What's, what was driving deeper behaviors in myself and in my clients. And so what I say that I do is I, I am a behavioral locksmith in a way. So I can, I work with clients, we work with parents largely and also largely professionals who are at um, a transitional point in their lives and wondering why things aren't working. And we work with the deep mind to unlock the root of seen and unseen behavioral patterns that are actually getting in the way of how people are people are showing up. And so it has an impact on really the way that, that people receive them at work, the way that they experience other people, for example, in collaboration, and of course, how they're showing up in their families and influencing their children. Well, was a lot, but I hope I hope that made sense. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm so delighted to be here. So I get to spend my day helping mission driven entrepreneurs and executives um, find clarity and momentum so they can achieve their moonshot and possibly alter the human operating system. If that's not too uh, too big a moonshot goal. Um, I'm going to take you all the way back to to when I was six years old and my neighbor 
<clears throat> had these pet squirrels and she she fell ill and so I organized the neighborhood kids and we went out and got a bunch of acorns and we brought them to my neighbor's pet squirrels because we recognized that together we could get a whole lot more squirrel or more acorns rather and we could help make this one person's life better and that's kind of the theme of my been kind of the theme of my life although as Kim mentioned I've had some struggles and had to figure out what it means to put life back together when you're starting a little later. Um, I spend a lot of my day working with, uh, particularly with tech companies. My background is in tech, but then I combine that, as Kim mentioned, with an academic uh, PhD in sociology. So I sort of know how tech works, but I also understand how groups work and how groups change. And so I get to work with a lot of, um, a lot of CXOs, um, both CIOs and CEOs in helping them manage change and build a, a single unified resilient culture. And then um, if there's a turn in my work, it is that I'm, I'm taking all these amazing things that I've learned of nearly 20 uh, years of change management in the, in the uh, IT industry and beginning to apply that more and more to individuals through uh, life and executive coaching. So I am just super delighted to be here. I'm honored to be among this super cool group of people and uh, looking forward to furthering the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Will. That was great. And Winston. Yes. Um, thank you very much. First of all, I'm delighted to be here with all of you. Uh, you are very inspiring people to me. And uh, what we do is we help uh, companies to uh, uh, face the challenge uh, through innovation, uh, create new opportunities with uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and integration technology but with a human touch. Because regardless of the technology advances, uh, we believe that everything is possible because there is a human behind it, right? Uh, so uh, I believe uh, the question about uh, who do we serve and, and why are a philosophical question, in my opinion, because it's great because at this point in my life, everything that I do have to move towards the objective of helping and serving others. And uh, we take that at heart. Uh, so at the end of the day, I like to believe, and this is a culture in my organization, that we help people. Because if we help people, we're helping the person behind the corporate title. And if we do that, they are gonna be better human beings in their families, organizations, and their countries, and so forth. We take uh, that to a deeper level, 360 degrees, uh, because we start with that, uh, uh, but philosophy from within. As in, in life, uh, we we evolve, we thrive from within outwards, and uh, uh, we start that with our own staff. The average age of my team is about 26, if you take myself out, <laughs> because I'm 56. <laughs> so that uh, with that, uh, what I'm doing, the combination of younger generation to become a better version of themselves, so they can help our human customer and uh, to top it off we do that with uh, latin american talent uh, engineers from venezuela uh, ecuador mexico chile and so forth and that way we build change from the youth all words to their business uh, world and uh, we also cascade that down into the um a uh, nonprofit organization that we, we built in Venezuela for rural children, where these 26 years old became the teachers of the 10 year old or the seven years old. So it's all connected, which is a major team in myself. So this is what we do. So I feel like we've traveled the world already and <laughs> just getting started. Regina, did you have a question you were going Oh gonna my goodness. This is just awesome. I, I am so impressed with this room. You know, you always hear the expression, like if you're in a mastermind, you you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Well, that's the way I feel right this moment. Definitely in awe of all of you. Thank you so much, Kim. What a great job you've done of bringing some fabulous people together here. Uh, I, Will, goodness, you started collaborating at the age of six. <laughs> <laughs> that we know of. You may have done it before that, that you didn't share with us. <laughs> oh my. And collaboration is absolutely a theme for each of you in what you do, isn't it? 
And, and I think it's even uh, a theme about how we collaborate with ourselves, with others, and with a sense of uh, creation or, or this, this universe and this evolving time we're in. And um, so I, I just really want to um, say, I just felt like we just traveled the world again. But going back to it, maybe I could ask each of you, um, what do you think is the single most important ingredient in establishing a connection and collaboration with any level? Because we're all talking multi-generational collaboration here, which is already in itself unusual. But I love the way that you're seeing across generations and how we learn, live and learn from the seven-year-olds and the, the 60 year olds and the 40-year-olds in the middle and probably beyond. So any, any space you want to take it to there, I'm going to open the floor right now. Uh, if I quickly mention on that one, the, the rationale for myself is growth because we all want to grow. I mean, it, you take a baby, you take a child, the instinct of growth is, is there. Even if we're older, we want to grow. So I believe that the seed that I take um, to develop uh, results and, and outcomes out of the growth. So I find when we place uh, a topic in, in the organization about growth, everybody's in. Everybody who loves themselves is in. And uh, we make that a voluntary conversation. That conversation is voluntary because forced collaboration is not collaboration, as they say. So uh, so growth is, is probably the essence of what we are doing here uh, uh, to, to bring them together. Fascinating. And um, Anka, you looked like you were about to start. Oh, we can't hear you, Anka. Yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, I once in a while I have to cough, so I was just trying to keep myself on mute for that. I was thinking, just reflecting on how his collaboration really showed up in my life, and actually, the more I think about it, the more it really is. You know, transformation is one of those threads that that runs through my life, um, uh, and then collaboration is also uh, will remind me. Uh, you know, I go back to high school when I just landed on this side of the uh, Atlantic. Um, I needed to collaborate to make it through school. Like I had no idea. I'd look for words I knew. They give me a book, and I go, "What now?" And <laughs> so I, I remember um, my friends coming over, and they would just sort of look at the page, and they would talk to me about it with hands and feet, and and I'd start to, you know, get a sense of it. And um, so collaboration even started then. And, and of course, I come from a large family. I'm the oldest of five kids, and boy, do we have to collaborate. To, make sure that you know we got one up on our parents right so we we started that early building fords and and doing whatever um collaboration also showed up for me um very powerfully <clears throat> in actually the strategic consulting space so um when i was at cisco uh, systems i actually was the global lead for the retail industry for a group called collaboration technology which is sort of really interesting in its own right um, it started at vo as, as voice over IP, and this is a time about 15 years ago when we had data networks and voice networks, mobility and video networks, all as separate networks They needed to converge and come together. Um, and so the question for industry was, well, how do we actually think about um, all these different layers of the network, uh, the infrastructure that we have, and how do we start about monetizing that and creating value out of that? And that, in fact, was a collaboration then with the enterprise customers to go figure out how did this new technology force over IP it was the early days of Skype and then what became collaboration technology, Cisco Stellar presence units and so on. Um, fast forward to today, I collaborate. I have a go to market partner called Seven Stones Leadership. Um, and, and then I, th I thought about one of the most precious collaborations in my life. Um, my mom's having a bit of a hard time. And, uh, and I got my love for poetry from her. I said, Ma, you want to do some art together? She goes, no, 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 I want to write. I said, okay, well, then let's write. I give you a word, you make a poem. And she started to write. And then she said, well, I get to give you a word. You write a poem. I said, okay. And so then I wrote. And then she goes, well, but I'm not so sure I agree with that thing that you did over there. It's such a precious collaboration. But what did it take for us to work together, especially a daughter and a mother? when it hasn't always easy been along the way, right? So um, there was just this enormous respect 
there's enormous love, this enormous care. And it's like, you know, for me, it started with this belief of, yes, we can. Yes, you can. For me, very few things in life are impossible. Um, there might be a problem, they're not impossible. And collaboration is the way actually forward. Like the way we're going to get escape velocity, the way we're going to fix these things, quote unquote, the way we're going to create together is, is through collaboration. All right, I've said a lot. Yeah, great. It's taking us into new dimensions. Who's next? I will jump in because that's a perfect launching point for the way I would have answered it. This year. <laughs> to me, um, I have some really great collaborative tools in my toolkit, but the one of the greatest is what I call emotional capitalism. And that's really kind of tied up in my story. So as you mentioned, Kim, at the beginning, I had a kind of a life crash um, not that long ago, about three years ago. And what I discovered, um, and to the, great, to, to the great grace of the universe, I guess, is that I had a group of people who were willing to invest love and belief in me because I was at a point in, my, in time in my life where I couldn't invest that in myself. Um, and now when I get to go back to corporate clients or individual coaching clients and invest love and belief in them, when I build collaborative teams and to Anka's point, I say, you, you can, you got this. We, we you got a team of people here that have your back. What that does is it creates the conditions where people start to believe in themselves. One of the biggest challenges I face with corporate clients, because I do a lot of work in the tech M&A space, and one of the biggest challenges I face is that um, you'll often find like a 30 year old company buying a two year old company. You'll find an average age of 55 buying an average age of 25. And um, and there's there's a lack of trust. And often that trust is because people aren't used to collaborating or feel empowered to collaborate with others that are not similar in, in kind of a general mold, mold to them. And so having that ability to uh, and really having the perspective that one of the greatest tools I have is just love and belief. I know that doesn't sell well. Like when, when we're trying to sell consulting services, we want to be able to sell, you know, marketable time and KPIs and OKRs and all that. But man, just, just that investment of love and belief in other people is to me the juice that makes collaboration possible. So how do you build the trust that they can soften and have that discussion instead of the KPIs? Um, for me, the way I do it is through questions. One of the best backhanded compliments I ever got, it was uh, somebody reached out to me from a client I was with last year. And they said, I got to tell you this story. I was asking, hey, have you heard anything from Will? And someone else in the organization said, tell me who Will is again. They said, oh, he's the question guy. <laughs> and I was like, hallelujah. Like, I, well, I, I, it worked. Everything I hoped would happen, happened because... Um, I think in order to be in order to be effectively effective collaborators, we need to admit that we don't know everything. We don't know all the answers. You know, so much of what I try to do, especially in the tech space, is try to help corporate cultures move toward agile. But the biggest um, challenge or hurdle to moving toward agile is that um, you're going to go into situations where you don't know the answers. You're going to go into processes that you may only know the next three to five steps. And sort of, sort of being able to have a, a posture of humility and have a posture of questioning, I think, is what, is what really helps establish that trust. Thank you. Well, wonderful. And Jennifer? Yeah. Um, Anka, I, I literally had tears come to my eyes when you shared that story. It was, thank you for sharing that. And, and you talked about you talked about a number of different themes there that um, I think often go missed when we talk about business, we talk about collaboration. We, we read so many strategic, we have the software and we have the different, the agile strategies and all of these techniques. But the theme that I'm hearing running through is really this, this it's a mindset. It's psychological safety. We hear about that a lot. I work in the culture space um, as a sort of like a, a side job and psychological safety is a big theme. Well, why is that? It's because when we're in a state of fear, we're literally shut down and disconnected from our ability to be generative, from our ability to connect with other people. And those are two fundamental elements that we require for collaboration. And then we also learn so many patterns deep in our childhood. So if we have, if we don't grow up in an environment, for example, with 
five brothers and sisters that we can like, you know, team up on our parents with. But also your parents had to create that space where that could happen. If you were living in fear, you would never have been able to build that skill set. And so there are patterns that we don't see. I'm really interested in what's not being written about. I'm interested in when we, you know, atomic habits and we're doing these things and we still run up against walls. And so what is that? Is there something wrong with me? No, it's because there's something that we're just not seeing that's much deeper. And it really starts, it starts early. And as, as leaders, there's a lot that we can be looking at and doing to create environments where people's nervous systems are not being activated, where they can collaborate. And then there's also at an individual level, you know, I'm, I'm speaking to those listeners out there you'll know yourself, people that you get this feedback, you're like, I really want collaboration. We have several clients working with us right now that are like, I really love collaborating, but I keep getting feedback that I'm not collaborative. What's going on? <laughs> and so these are the people that, that I'm talking to. There's something deeper that's probably operating where you know, if you're in a state of fear, or you're in a state of stress, and that's going to interfere with your ability to collaborate. And so that's something that um, that I, I don't hear a lot of people talking about because I just wanted to kind of surface that piece. So if you're the inner locksmith, do you find that every one of these stories has a different key or code that you need to find? Yes. It's very, very specific to the individual, which is why books don't work for everybody, but work really well for some people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Winston, you were going to say something. I wanted to say that uh, I think when we met uh, Jay, uh, Jay Love and Ken Will in Dubai recently, I believe the reason why the conversation was so wonderful is because it started from a place of vulnerability. We all came there from vulnerability. Sometimes when you try to have collaborative conversations and you come with a uh, uh, with a mindset that you know you know it all and you're not asking questions but you're saying things you really do not grow and uh, you are in your own bubble of uh, belief that you you think you you're walking in the right place so to me that is essential because that conversation we had in dubai with most of you uh, was fantastic we we were vulnerable we were all successful yet vulnerable and uh, that helped us a lot. I believe it's a, it's a major uh, base uh, of foundation to, to grow. I'm sorry. This for me really comes back to what j was saying. Like, it's so, so cool the way you talked about it, which is you need both the container and the mindset. And it's really this, inter it's this back and forth between these two. You know, this, am I, am I safe enough to be vulnerable? Um, am I safe enough to be in who I am and to really live from that core from which I live? Right? Can I just land here and can I be here? Can I use my breath for a moment to remember who I am? But the container is just as important. Like it's a, what, I, what I saw when you said that, J-Love, was just a back and forth between these two. It's like not one, one, but it's like, you know, it's, it, <clears throat> it's, it's really th those two things together. And then what becomes possible from that place, what becomes possible is what I said, which is a yes, we can, or what Will said, right, um, is, is I believe, we believe. And then from that also becomes possible is I see you. I, I kept on thinking when you guys were talking, you know, while we're talking this avatar, like, you know, when the two things come together and I see you, you know, I see you. And I think that's part of what is really important uh, for collaboration is um, I see you. If I, if I can just back up all the beautiful comments I just had heard, I just heard with a particular story, um, because what what I think really touches on what Jayla Vinanka and, and Winston have referenced is what I call the Google certainty error, which is if I can type something into Google and I get the answer, that must be the right answer. Um, but you know, I use um, I use copywriting software. AI based copywriting software. And it's really fascinating whenever I try to get it to write about collaboration or well, collaboration, maybe, but when I, when I ask it to write, like, why do we need other people to help us? And what, cause what it does is it goes out and it reads the internet and it, it sort of, it sort of combines what it perceives to be the wisdom of the internet into some mean or average point. And 
whenever I ask it to say, you know, why we can't succeed alone, it gives me two or three sentences. And then it says, but in the end, we all need to go out there on our own and succeed. And it's all up to us. And we need to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and so on. And I think what's, what's a beautiful theme coming here is that, um, yeah, there is a certain thing that's true. I think I know the, I know the three other uh, panelists here and have had, as Winston mentioned, time with them in person, and I know their hearts. And so I know that they are people with a deep sense of personal agency. They know how to do the things they want to do in the world. Um, but I think when we can build these cultures of trust and safety, when we can create collaborative envi environments where it's, where it's okay to fail because people aren't seen as yeah. cogs, but they're seen as unique individuals with unique contributions to this world, then collaboration just skyrockets. It's just a different game at that point. Yeah. That's so important that people can fail in a safe environment and be so real. And, um, you know, as, as we talk about transformation and, um, you know, the sugar turns into toffee, it never becomes sugar again, getting to that level of change or development. And then basically, I think Winston, you opened it up talking about basically biology, the basic cells in our body want are here to grow and expand and you know you you went straight there and uh, the heart connections you've all mentioned um i guess i'm i'm interested in any moonshot architects that are in the room and wh where you think we need to go i've heard at least a few of you so what's one thing that you're excited about that's a moonshot collaboration that you'd share with us today I have one. Please. Go ahead, Anka. No, go ahead. After you. Um, so I, I shared this. I think some of the people in the room have heard this, but um, I have uh, this vision of a magic school for children and families where they can come and, and learn um, the way that the mind works, universal truths, patterns of nature. And it's a little bit down the road and it's going to require some major collaboration to be able to create this because not only do I not have all the skills, I have no desire to develop all the skills <laughs> that it would take to, to, to do this well. But it's a very, um, it's a very exciting, it's an exciting picture. It's something that I think I know, I know the world will be a much better place for it. And so far, every person I've said, I, I used to talk about it as a place for children. The parents think, can I come too? <laughs> so it's kind of expanding. And um, yeah, so that I think it's the, I think when you have something that is bigger than yourself, that you know is going to be really for other people, but is you're deeply connected to it for yourself as well. That level of, of like going towards something with so much enthusiasm, it really helps to release a lot of the ego and the holding on to that makes it um, sometimes challenging to collaborate with your own idea. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Aka, were you ready? Yeah, I, so I should probably talk about um, the movie and the movie month that we are in the process of creating, and it's called Tip the Point Beyond. Um, <clears throat> Margaret Mead said, never doubt a, that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And so John Livermore is the, is, is, uh, is the one who built the first net zero house uh, here in Massachusetts. So net zero in terms of energy and from that a whole bunch of uh things have happened and one of them is that we're in the i'm executive producer now for we're, we're making a movie about tipped and it's really hard to imagine when we don't take sufficient action what does this earth actually look like we're sort of in this crisis mode but not in a very humanistic mode about that like what does life look like in 2050 if we've actually gotten past that tipping point and so, um, but the movie is only part of that because there's some there's some myths that, you know, when we recycle, that's enough. It's actually not enough. It's like there's some really massive systemic changes have to happen. And so how do we create 
uh, a move a movement in this case to start making those uh, s systemic changes. Um, whether that's touching the life of 10 million people, then touch another 10 million, who touch another 10 million, and we're suddenly exponential. And I think that's what we really we don't call it a moonshot; we call it an earth shot. And I think we just had the earth shot prize here in, in Boston. So I cannot wait for 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 us to be driving down that path and massively impacting this world and leaving it better than we found it. Right? I mean, that's I I. Someone said to me the other day, I said, I want to be a good ancestor. I want to be a good ancestor. Very nice. Like that. Powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Winston? Yeah. yeah I, I love that uh, notion, Anka. I love it. Uh, a good ancestor. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it down. Um, you mentioned also the tipping point. That gives us a sense of the need. That we have to accelerate whatever we're doing for the good of humanity. And uh, in order to do that, and that's why we, at least in my organization, trying to go down to younger generation because we have to do more faster earlier. Therefore, that is the, that's the main focus. And we, we can leverage the advances in technology and communications to spread the world quickly. And uh, we quickly realize that we can easily connect someone from Venezuela to someone from uh, Sri Lanka, for example, very easily because at the end, uh, in the bottom, of the heart, growth and love, as we'll mention, is the seed. So I will vote for use the communications and the technology to connect people, to embrace technology with a human touch so we can really transform lives. Uh, recently, I came from a, a, an important technology show and we came all excited with a technology about geospatial technology. We can use satellite information to come up with technology. And the whole team is absolutely enthusiastic about the idea. They want to be, I call them astronauts. They want to be astronauts in order to do good in, 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 in the earth uh, with agri agriculture, agrotech um, kind of projects and everything related to sustainability uh, using the space down to earth. So that, that's, uh, that's my, my thoughts on that topic. We've traveled a long way from AI and uh, technology to now astronauts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So really? I, can, I can share with you my moonshot mission because it's on my board literally right in front of me at all times. So my moonshot mission is to disrupt the self-help industry and play a part in altering the human operating system. That's my moonshot. And then the way you get there is through what Stephen Kotler would call high hard, goal, high, hard goals. And so one of my first high, hard goals in that moonshot is um, I'm creating an app called Life Teams. And so everybody, like I talk to people and they're like, yeah, I, I know I need other people to help me. How do I find them? You know, you don't just walk up to random people in the grocery store and say, hey, you want to help me change the world? <laughs> like, it's difficult to find these people, um, but people are anxious. And so um, what I'm in the process of developing actually with a very gifted AI architect who built one of the most successful dating apps <laughs> is building this product called Life Teams. And it's very much it's still early in the process. Um, but my, uh, my goal is to build, and so the idea would be that up to six people can find a team of each other, a team of people willing to be committed to each other and to really help them grow and help them reach their goals. Um, and my goal is to um, create 100,000 life teams over the next three years. Um, so that's, that's sort of the big moonshot, but then I'm, I'm really trying to focus specifically on what that looks like um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the real, because, we, can, we often talk about these moonshots. What I love about everything that was shared here is we've got real answers to how we, we get our moonshot or in Anka's case, our earth shot. Like how we, we, we have these ideals. How do we actually create something of value that gets us closer to those ideals? And I'm super excited about some of the ideas I heard here. Have you tested out one of these app ventures in any of the companies you consult with yet, Will? I'm actually working on it. <laughs> You must have been listening about three hours ago because that was the conversation I had at 8.30 this morning. So I am I love it. testing that theory. What I'm doing actually initially is just testing out some of the questions by which we'll find, by which we'll let the A, we'll ask the AI engine to pair people. So that's uh, that's where we're starting is just still very much in the research phase. What are the questions 
that lead people to collaboration and help you find an ideal time, ideal team, I should say, of contributors. You know, we all know, if you think about the best corporation, you would never imagine the CEO was filing the tax forms or hiring people, right? You have a CHRO or a C chief legal officer, a chief financial officer. And we so often think we need to um, do everything for ourselves, by ourselves, but that's just not the reality. Pick, pick apart the, the most independent story of an entrepreneur and you'd very quickly find people behind them who help them succeed. So this app is, is a way of kind of helping those people come together. Absolutely. Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> Can I just say wow <laughs> to everything that's been said so far? I, uh, I just, you know, the thing that I have heard today that is more pronounced than in any show that I've done on collaboration is the human factor, the humanness of, of collaboration. So oftentimes we're thinking about the business, the, the, this, the, that, something else, you know, but, but you folks have all brought in the human factor. And Kim, you said something early on in the show that I wanted to go back and have you explain a little bit. And that was, you mentioned that we need to even collaborate with ourselves. Could yeah. you talk about that a little bit? You know, um, I'm a musician and I've learned to listen and I listen, I know they're going to play the wrong note slightly before they do it. And if I play a little bit bolder, they might not. All those kinds of quiet things that happen in a chamber ensemble or a stage, or I'll see, oh, the conductor's got the wrong tempo. So I take a breath in a way that slows it all down. So these are very subtle pieces that come into working with people all the time because we actually, our heart, they've proven it sees 23 feet and the brain only sees six feet and or senses. And so if you're actually using that human element that everybody spoke about, I believe that um, um, money is a reflection of our creativity and how we're using our talents. And so people come and they say, Kim, I need to make more money. I said, yeah, let me get to know you it's going to blossom because you blossom and really yeah. it's, it's getting back to uh, self-love and warts and all, who am I? Oh my gosh, that's okay. And so few people will have the courage to have those conversations. But if they do, I believe they listen to others very differently. So it's about, for me, there's a lot of everything that was said today was, is magnificent. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, I, I, I met each of these individuals and I was almost reduced to tears in some moment of every conversation by the absolute genuine authenticity yes. they brought and they bring. And um, Anka, I don't know if we can urge a poem out of you or not yeah. really, but you know, that stillness and listening, if we connect with ourselves, we can connect so much better to anyone else etc. Because if we have a kind of patch that we cover up, like, I'm not going to talk about that side of myself, the others feel it. And so we end up repelling somebody we need on that app that Will's going to create for all of us. So I, I find there's a lot of that work uh, that's internal. So right. I connect to yourself, connect to others and connect to source, whatever that is for you, in a sense. Um, yeah. Anyway, and I'm uh, yeah. Before Anka does her, her poem, and I'm so excited to hear that. Um, also, you know, going back to what Will said about love and belief and building that trust and then tying that to what you just said, Kim, that we've got to have that love of self first and then we can connect with others. And yeah, awesome. What a world we're creating, right? Yeah. Anka, have you got yes. a poem for us? I do. And I want you to know, Kim, that I picked this one before you just said what you just said. Oh, -ho. Um, which is <laughs> this so tune. it's amazing. OK. So um, and this is another way of maybe thinking about collaboration, which is just what is in the unseen, you know, what's what's in the scene and what's in the unseen. And J. Love actually started to sort of point us in that direction. This one's called Boundaries. It's, it's, it starts like this. I say yes or no, 
not maybe, not somehow or sometime, no. And I land in courage, parry disharmony and discord, no to take a stand and yes to stand in all that my heart holds dear, living from the core, living from who I am in that moment when I say yes or I say no. Love it. Yes. Profound. Beautiful. 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 So it's it's uh there's another good one about courage one day. Uh, we gotta get out on the internet. Um but um you know poetry is a portal to our soul and and it's a way for us to really connect to this invisible and connect to the other side and and so i do teach uh, on occasion and i don't call it writing poetry because that sounds way too complicated but i call it catching words so you you can catch them you can catch them and then you just let them drop on paper and you go oh okay and you, go, <laughs> you do what jay love does you go magic one and then and you ask them to arrange themselves and they arrange themselves <laughs> And then you read it. And the moment that you read it, there's some magic that happens. And then you read it the first time and it's really emotional. <clears throat> and then you read it. I ask you to read it the second time so it can be heard on the other side of the room. And then you suddenly stand in your power of who you are because these words actually were about who you are. It's a very amazing process, mm. this poetry thing. Sounds like it. You have never had a podcast like this, Regina. <laughs> Anka, thank you so much for sharing. It's a big ask, and uh, but much appreciated. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, this, yes. Thank you so thank, very much. Thank Thanks you, to everyone. You know. Yes. I, I'm gonna, Anka. I'm gonna get that catchphrase game with the childrens in Venezuela with the rural school. It's gonna be fantastic. I think they're gonna love it. Okay, do you know? I'll actually we'll do a session with your kids with the kids in Venezuela. We be we'd have to do uh, a little polish up my Spanish. Wow, <laughs> fantastic! Thank you. We, we would do that. That's you know, wild. there's one thing, Kim, that you said that I just want to call out or pull out. Um, and actually, Regina, you triggered it for me. It's just listening how important in collaboration is listening, listening to the whispers of our heart, listening to those thoughts that just flutter through your mind for a moment, just to listening for that note that's going to be not the right note right before it happens, right? The, the listening for the sound of the tire on the, on, 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 the, on the pavement and the listening for the cars that are coming or not coming, like the listening for where's, the wheel of the person that I'm riding my bike with, like where's their wheel, but just listening. And um, I, I, I just feel like we, we, we ought to just pull that one out. It's just how important in collaboration listening is, deep, deep and active listening. Yes. And, and Kim and, and, and Tim, uh, I wanted to bring a, a topic that because when we talk about collaboration, and you talk to anybody else about collaboration, immediately they think, okay, collaboration is positive, it's wonderful, it's easy. But sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we have to embrace, yes, candor on that collaboration, but also conflict. Because no. collaboration sometimes start with the conflict that we have within ourselves and the conflict we have with others, especially in the corporate world. And I believe it's important to have that humility to embrace that duality of uh, candor and conflict. I believe that's an important topic to discuss, if we may. Yeah, it, it's about actually confronting that and, and um, embracing it at the same time so that you can connect and create. Um, but epic duels are great fun to um, decode in the corporate world every now and then. It takes a <laughs> while. It takes a while. But um, you're absolutely right. We didn't touch on that, Winston. It's really important. Yeah. Wow, folks, this has been amazing, and we could go on for a while longer. Unfortunately, we're just about out of time. Uh, Kim, would you lead us in our wrap-up round of having everybody kind of uh, give their final thoughts and their contact info? Absolutely. I'd love each of you just to share any piece of wisdom that you wish as a result of this dialogue or that we didn't get to. What did we forget <laughs> today, you know? And then how people can reach you. Um, so... Um, uh, Anka, we'll go back and 
in alphabetical order. That way we. Yeah, could. there we go. So just in wrap up, I, I just really have a couple of words, which is yes, you can. Like no matter what, just there is a way out of no way. Yes, you can. Um, the way to get hold of me is Anka Strategy, the word Anka, A-N-C-A, and strategy at gmail.com. Super easy. Um, that's the one I watch most, and uh, that would be the great way to get hold of me. Awesome. Jayla? Yeah. Uh, the most, I would say, the, the one thing, and this was the theme of the last conversation, is, is deep listening to yourself. Words matter. And in that listening and that stillness, listen to what you're saying to yourself. Because the way that you speak to yourself and the way that you interact and collaborate with yourself is the same way that you reflect out into the world, the way that you speak and collaborate with others. And you can reach me at Mercury Coach, that's www.mercury.coach, or you can email me at jlove, J-L-O-V-E, at mercury.coach. Thank awesome. you. Will? I guess my last thought is um, to help us think about our analogies. So one of the dominant analogies in our culture is you need to secure your own air mask before you can put the air mask on, on the next person. But the reality is that surrounding us often are people who are struggling to put their own air masks on. And we have the opportunity to keep them safe during turbulent times so that they can then put someone else's air mask on in the future. This is a chain of contribution and a long path is an idea I'm really deeply committed to. Um, the way you can find me, the one-stop shopping is just go to willsampson.com. There is no P in Samson, so it's W-I-L-L-S-A-M-S-O-N. There's a Scottish folk singer who has the same name, but and he's more beautiful than me, but you'll, you'll recognize the bald head and every, Social contacts and everything you can get through that one site. Awesome. <laughs> and Winston? Well, um, I think uh, that I would wrap up by saying that uh, as we all discuss here, we're reaching a tipping point, um, as uh, Anka mentioned, and that we are to accelerate uh, that uh, growth. And I will invite everyone to bring poetry to their lives, bring music to their life, and uh, to not only absorb it, but bring it down to the younger generation because we do want to be good ancestors. So that's my take. That's great. That's great. How do we reach you, Winston? Winston.rivero at newtoms.com. Winston.rivero at newtoms.com. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. And um, so I'll just conclude in the sense that um, I think. I just encourage everybody to bring what the artists bring to this crazy world um, and that corporates tend to shy away from dare to be outrageous and, you know, make frequent mistakes. And I'm, I'm always reminding myself and others that, but I, I just want to thank everybody. It's been incredible today. Um, I can be reached at Kim, the Kim Walker dot com dot au is my email kim at kimwalker.com dot au i used to live in australia <laughs> or you can find my company the performance dimension dot com and uh, it's it's growing and evolving probably every year there we are so regina we, i want to thank you for inviting all of us and please ask you to, to do the final send off and sign off yeah. <laughs> thank you everybody for the holiday season and making time and all of those things yeah Absolutely. It has been a joy for me to be with all of you today, to meet you, to get to learn a little bit about you and to give you a space to share your wisdom and uh, your hearts. I heard hearts today. <laughs> um, Jay Love, you said you had tears earlier. Now I've got them. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it is. Um, this is, it's a passion for me helping people to connect more. Um, and, and I love that this particular show has focused on those human elements of connection and collaboration. Thank you all so much for being here. And thank you folks for watching today. We hope you'll come back again soon and to our collaboration conversations. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you and bye for now. Thank you.
Thank you.